we creep closer and closer to a defining game for both of our local football teams. The Giants try to extend their season. The Jets try to prove they are legit. But you know what's funny, Tiki? For many, many, many years living in this town, yep. the Jets-Giants quote-unquote rivalry was like this non-existent thing. Yes. You know, we'd play every four years before 2002. It was actually spread out and sometimes right after each other. But since 2002, it's like an every four-year thing. It's like a presidential election. It's like a <laughs> leap year. And for a while, like when I grew up, man, there was nothing between the Jets and Giants. I never really felt it. I never felt the hatred. never felt the dislike. Things have changed mm. to where the Jets and the Giants as a rivalry – has all of a sudden, like, legitimately become a real thing in this town. Because in this town, we've got nine teams. Two in the NBA, three in the NHL, two in baseball, two in football. And I always looked at Jets-Giants as towards the bottom of that pecking order in terms of rivalries. Mm -hmm. But I got to admit, over the last few years, maybe the last decade, that has moved up the list to the point where it's challenging as the number one rivalry in this town. It probably is, and it's surprising because when I got here, now granted, I grew up in southwest Virginia, and realizing that the... Giants and the Jets were in different conferences. We played a preseason game regularly, but other than that, the, the game meant absolutely nothing. I never understood the rivalry. Like the so, wait, wait, wait. so when you played your games and you were a part of two Jet Giant games, yes, there was nothing. Um, not really, not not really at all. And and the first one I don't even remember. <laughs> Back in we <laughs> looked shows, this up, it was like nineteen ninety nine. I was like, wait, we played them in nineteen ninety nine. I don't think I was playing a ton, but to me as a player from out of state, it didn't mean anything because in my mind, all I said was, this game does. It's it's a preseason game, and yes, we play them every four years, but who remembers what the hell happened four years ago when half the roster has turned over, right? So it never felt like it was a real rivalry, even though the fans because of likely their proximity to each other, kind of either hated or or were apathetic. I don't know. It was, just, it, it was weird to hear the anger expressed towards, in my case, the Jets, mm. when the games we played never really had meaning to me. But I do think that for the player, it's definitely changed. Well, and as a fan, it's changed. And see, for me, I could tell you the exact moment it changed. The exact moment that I looked at the Giants as a nameless, faceless opponent like I did in 1999. It was just a game. That was it. The Jets were 4-7. and seven. They needed to win against the Giants, and they were just an opponent that happened to be in the NFC. But to me, everything changed on Christmas Eve 2011. That was the, <laughs> that was the line of demarcation. Because yeah, that, see, I was gone, so, so I, don't, I didn't feel no, it. No, no, and I get that because Jets-Giants was never a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I grew up as an Islander fan despising the Rangers, and Islanders-Rangers is still a thing. And I get it for the Devil fans out there. You feel the same way about the Rangers. Mm -hmm. The Ranger Island, the Ranger Devil dynamic is fascinating. And Sean actually explained this to me because I never understood it. That really it's geographic. That the How so? That the Ranger fan in New Bitch, Jersey. New York Ranger fan. <laughs> the Ranger fan in New Jersey okay. doesn't care about the Islanders. And the Ranger fan on Long Island, like oh, got Sean, it, got it. doesn't care about the Devils. Oh, got it. Yes. That, that makes a ton of sense. It's yeah. so far. It's two states away. Yeah, like basically. the Devils aren't a real. I live on Long Island. I've grown up Ranger on offense. The Devils are just like, yeah, like we want to beat them, but they're not a rival. Yeah, but there. when you but, faced but them in the conference finals yeah, a decade right, ago, yeah. you must have cared. But they're no, in the you, same conference. Same yeah, no, no, no. Division, you right? care and you have hatred, but you're not really like throwing your Island of Fan friend in the locker kind of thing. You know what you're I mean? You're almost not close enough, even yes. though it's tri state area. Yeah. It doesn't feel like right next door. Right. right. And look, here's the thing about hockey and basketball because you just brought up something very important. They are in the same division. The Devils, Islanders, and Rangers are in the same division. The Brooklyn Nets and the New York Knicks, Let's go Knicks. are in the same division. Okay? But here's why while that rivalry exists, like trust me, Nets, Knicks, I'm fired up. I don't <laughs> miss a game. I care. But I also think it's sort of one-sided because for a long period of time, Nick fans didn't give a rat's ass about the Nets. In fact, they're back to not even caring about the Nets. The Nets still in the league. Thank you, Boomer. <laughs> like, it doesn't even exist to a lot of them. They forgot they exist. Yeah. The thing about Jets, Giants, and Mets, Yankees is that even though we're not in the same division or league, there are more of us that can't stand each other. Does that make sense? Well, I think because the games are few and far between, mm -hmm. they are, when they do happen, it's like scramble for tickets. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, Social media. 
I think social media from a player standpoint has played the biggest part of it because now you see what the other team is doing and talking about. Like, for instance, this season, the New York Jets defense is the 85 Bears. The New York Giants, they started slow, had some issues. Now they're just going about their business, playing really well, but going out about their business under the radar. And when, because I'm just reading the clips this week, they were asked about it. Yeah, is this the best defense the Jets have had? They're like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> right? They, it's like, so it, it, I don't, it's not rubbing them the wrong way, but they're hearing all the talk, all the noise coming from Florham Park, and it's the complete opposite coming from Giant Stadium. You see, this, you, you just pissed me off. Okay, this is my problem. That, that's emerged with the Jets and the Giants. Yeah, what? The Jets haven't really said all that much. Okay, DJ okay. Reed did. DJ Reed said one thing in the preseason. Robert Sala said we faced the gauntlet of the top yeah, quarterbacks but, but, and we've embarrassed them. Tiki, yeah. Aaron Rodgers claimed to not to know who a Giant starter's name yeah, was. But Tiki, Aaron Rodgers, I don't know who you are, Jihad Ward. Here's what you're Get doing. Get out of my face. Here's what you're doing and you're not the only Wayne one. Wayne Martindale blitzed Aaron Aaron Rodgers every single down he was in it in the preseason. Boy, you are. You, you, I'm you, just telling you, dude. Yeah, but you guys, and I've heard this now from you. I've heard it from Sean. I heard it from Chris Bizignano. Does a great job covering the Giants and always said, I never hate the Jets. Yeah, BS, Chris. You're a liar. I don't you hate, hate the, the Jets. Jets. No, no, but this week you do. I love Nate Because Hackett. all of a sudden you take innocent <laughs> things that are not that big of a deal and you try to recreate Rex Ryan. That's the problem. See, you people, <laughs> Giant fans. Thinking. No, you people. What do you mean, no. you people? Giant fans. <laughs> I wasn't even talking about all of you Rex people. Rex Ryan. What does that have to do with Rex I'll Ryan? I'll tell you exactly what has to do with Rex Ryan. What broke me was 2011. That's when I started to look at the Giants a little bit differently. Okay. Christmas Eve, Victor Cruz is still running. We all know the story. And it also broke all yeah, of that you. That was kind of epic. It also broke all of you. <laughs> Long because you, in Giant history. Because saying. you guys hated Rex Ryan, okay? That's mm. where this whole thing started. Because Rex Ryan did well, talk a big game. Well, well, oh, on. that's true, by the way. But ho- here's the thing. Well, I don't know if I hated Rex Ryan until Brandon Jacobs hated Rex Ryan. like Because Brandon Jacobs was the... I don't know, the, the the flag bearer for the Giants mm-hmm. when it came to that rivalry. Right. Remember that? I, mean, he almost, I know. Like, he wanted to beat him up. No, because right? Rex. They wanted to fight. It because Rex did things, which I admit, were over the top. He not only talked a big game, but then he covered up the Giant trophies on that night. Mm-hmm. So I understand, and I'm not here to relitigate the Rex Ryan stuff, but that's where you guys, for the most part, started to turn on the Jets. And here's what's going on with what you just said, mm-hmm. what, what Bizignano has said, and what Morash has said, and most of you. You're taking things that are not that big a deal, and you're making it a big deal because all you could think about is Rex Ryan from a decade no, ago. We're not this even... is Robert Sala saying they embarrassed quarterbacks is not Rex Ryan. I know it's and not. Just, and you... by the way, he's, he's right. Exactly. So I'm not even arguing that, he, that he's wrong. You he's just bloviating. brought it up as a thing but that bloviating. would piss the Giants it's not, off. It's not that it's pissing the Giants off. It's just the Jets are – they're one of, what let's call it, 26 teams that are kind of just right in the middle of the field. There's two teams that are at the top, at least we think, even though they lost to the Jets. <laughs> the Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs, they're both 6-1. and one. And then there's a couple of teams at the bottom who just aren't going to compete, compete, like Carolina. Who knows what's going on in Denver? Um, there's, there's a couple, Chicago maybe. Right? There's a couple that are down at the bottom. But everybody else feels like they can beat anybody else any given week. Okay. Right? That's what it feels like. And and so when you listen to how the Jets have been speaking about themselves, it's it feels like they're trying to put themselves out of the second no, team. Yeah, yeah, no, he's you know right. What I mean? They are a 500 team with dynasty mouths. No, 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 no. They're not though. No. That, that's the problem. You guys are recreating. But that's what Rex it sounds again. like. No, but it doesn't. Why? Because he said they embarrassed really good quarterbacks. Would We've got just, a damn good football team. Would you just admitted they did? Yes. So what has he but it's, said? It's one thing to say. It's one thing to do it. It's another to say it. What have they said? They're not. They, they're saying that they are the best defense ever. Right? Oh, stop. That, it was one comment in August by DJ Reed. It's not like he repeats it every week. Uh, but but Coach Sala kind of co-signed it in a sense. And by the way, I'm not saying he's he's wrong. And it's not even an issue that he's right or wrong. It's just that it's that's the narrative around the Jets. So it's not even that anybody's saying anything. I'm not blaming. It's a narrative I'm not, I'm you not, guys created. It's a narrative they created. No, no. And, and it just keeps perpetuating Tiki, itself. The Jets are not big, tough talkers. Were they in 9, 10, and 11? Yes. Mm-hmm. 
I understood why you hated Rex back then. But the problem is now that I don't hate them. I'm just saying it's different. What's different? It's different how the Giants are going about becoming a a, a middle of the, that pack, that second tier pack, a middle of that second tier pack team. That it's different than how the Jets went about it. Well, how have they gone about it differently? Why? Because they acquired Aaron Rodgers? No, 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 no. It's what they're saying they're and how sh- they view themselves. That is such crap. We're, we're, they're not saying anything. You guys are recreating 2011. Okay, did, because that's your glory day of D- sticking it to us, which D- I understand. Did DJ Reed not say this at the beginning he of did. the season? Yeah, no, he did. And did Robert Sala not say this just a week ago? Yes. What have the Giants said? Despite having fantastic last two weeks of defensive football, because we're not talking about the offense, because on offense we're both subpar, right? We know cheeks, how that works. Cheeks, cheeks, exactly. Team. But we, I'm talking defensively, and we all have agreed that defense is carrying teams in the NFL this year more so than I think we've seen in a, in a lot of years. And the Jets are primarily three and three because their defense has been so stout. The Giants won last week because they got after Sam Howell and the and the Washington Commanders. And the week before, they held uh, Josh Allen and the high flying Buffalo but you Bills just hit to, on to it. no points in but three you quarters. Just hit on but they're it. not Rob- talking about okay. It. But Robert Sala was talking about what they did to Allen, Mahomes, and Hurts. The Giants haven't done that. So there isn't anything to say. And I don't think what he said was that big of a deal, nor is it anything that should cause you, Sean, or any other Giant fan to create this false narrative that the Jets are a bunch of big talkers like they were a decade ago. No, They're that, not. See, you're comparing it to a decade ago. Because you guys are. I am not. I've not said Rex Ryan's name once. Yeah. Because what I'm hearing, when you brought it up. Because what I'm hearing is the same as a decade ago, which is where this thing started. The Jet Giant rivalry, quote unquote, mm-hmm. for me and you, all began. Began at the same time. It began for you guys out there because you didn't like Rex Ryan. That's where, that's where it all started. I agree with I that. actually didn't mind Rex Ryan. He said a little my wife at, at Starbucks. Like, <laughs> hey, hey, Mrs. Barber. She's like, my name's not Barber. Any jet coach sends Tiki in edible arrangements. He loves them. <laughs> that's right. And then I think what's happened since then is the Jets have been so bad, your dislike's been dormant. Now that the Jets have had a couple of good games and they're 3-3 three and three and their fans happen to be excited, maybe sometimes too much, all of a sudden it's like, ah, ah. You guys are too excited. Now you're a bunch of big talkers. It's Mm. a fake idea that you've created around this team. That's what it is. You're out of your mind. And it's not even about Rex. It's not about the team. It's about the fans, Evan. The Jet fan is like taking the worst part of Nick fans, the worst part of Met fans, (laughs) and they just kind of mold everything, worst part of Yankee fans even, and mold everything together to like this young, arrogant monster where (laughs) you'd think they're a Super Bowl contender every year where they struggle to be 500. And, I mean, if I can hear one more time, we came close to beating the Chiefs. Well, hold on. First of all, most Jet fans, and every Jet fan is different, every sports fan is different, the Jet fan in general cannot be defined as arrogant. The Jets are winning, no problem. Oh, yes, they can be. No, they can't be. Maybe in your fake world you live in. It ain't a fake world, pal. But there are a lot of Jet fans who look at Sunday, not all of them, some of them, Mm -hmm. who are nervous as all hell. I would actually say 90% of them probably are. On the inside, on the exterior, it's a lot of bravado. The Jets are winning, no problem. We're going to sweep them away. Not really. See, again, here's what you're doing, and it's proof that the Jet Giant thing is a thing, Mm -hmm. is you dislike them so much, Sean, not you, that you have to create the false boogeyman, (laughs) like this fake boogeyman, to create more hate. And so rivalries are about fans, which is why Jets, Giants, and Mets, Yankees, despite not being in the same leagues, actually have risen above Rangers, Islanders, Rangers, Devils, and Knicks, Nets. Because here's the truth about those other rivalries. Mm -hmm. The Knicks and Nets feature about an 85-15 split in this town. I'm the first to accept that. Mm. I'm wearing my Nets sweatshirt today, and I'm fired up tomorrow yeah. night, but I also know my place in yeah. the world. So so the rivalry doesn't really exist because there's not enough volume of net fans. The rivalry exists just not to that same level because we don't have a civil war in this city yeah. when these two teams are on the same level. It's not a split. It's not a split. So, yeah, we're competing for the same thing, and there's a chance they face each other in the first round of the playoffs or in the play-in tournament, and that would be amazing. But it's not that same kind of fan energy that you just heard in this discussion. And, by the way, it's similar in hockey. Like, I love the Islanders, and there's plenty of Devil fans out there, but the Rangers, 
I hate to admit it because I can't stand them, are just that much more popular. Mm -hmm. And so the second team in hockey features a split between the Islanders and the Devils. Now, there is a great rivalry and energy in the building when they play each other. Rangers, Islanders is an awesome electricity, and I'd love to see them face each other in the postseason. It would make this town go nuts. But the difference between that and this is Jets-Giants is like a 55-45 split. So the only comparison, so it's not hockey, it's not basketball, the only comparison could be Mets and Yankees. Correct. And I think what's going on with Mets-Yankees is this. Right now, we've entered a phase of Mets-Yankees where Yankee fans don't hate anyone but themselves. They're self loathers <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> That's true. Right. Hey, Mets fans so shit right. Yankees suck. We go, you're right. Yes. <laughs> you're so we have, right. We, now this this is, guy sucks. Get rid of this guy. <laughs> it's true. Why, why didn't you sign this guy? It really is that way. The rivalry amongst Yankee fans is <laughs> amongst funny. each other. That's funny. It's amongst like Big Mac versus Sean. You know, like those kinds of fans. So the Mets-Yankees things can erupt very quickly. It can erupt. It's like a... It's like a volcano yeah. that's dormant but right now. But it's not just it's yeah. not sitting there. It's not you're not ready to attack the Met well, fan and that's if you're the a Yankee you, or the Yankee fan if you're a Met. And we went this year. Subway series is a ton of electricity. But you know what happens if a team goes up or down? It's a lot of laughing and kind of you know feel like a like a but, contentious. But my point is like the, Subway series. The fans ha- actually I think have fun with each other in the stadium. Sunday is going to be a lot of fu. No fu yeah. on every drive. Yeah. Like there's like. V- Vile anger. About I don't know. It. We were sitting next to Chris Sims, and he was being that's true. <laughs> that's true. Towards the Met fan, <laughs> dude. If if the Mets played well that day, that was the game where the Yankees beat them up, and I showed any excitement. There's a chance Chris Sims would have thrown me on the field. <laughs> no exactly. Doubt. I mean, he was, a chance. He was berating every Met fan he I came know. across. And, the, and, and like, I was quiet because the Mets were getting their ass kicked, so I was just sitting there scoring my game. Like, I had no reason to say anything. It was kind of awesome. But God forbid there was, like, a big two-out, you know, three-run double by Francisco Lindor, and I clapped. Sims would have come over and, like, thrown me in the stands. The Met-Yankee thing amongst fans has been a huge thing for 25 years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Subway Series, the Clemens-Piazza rivalry, facing each other every single season. And now we may have a rivalry in the offseason when both teams are going after the same free agent. We haven't really had that yet. We may have that with Otani or Yamamoto. We'll see. Mets-Yankees, to me, despite not being in the same division, has been that number one hatred between fan bases. But because it's dormant Mm -hmm. and because Giant fans have created a fake anger at Jet fans that we talk too much (laughs) and that we're all a bunch of arrogant young guys who think we're going to smoke everybody, that's why Jets-Giants has now emerged, as I can't believe I'm saying it, Mm. but probably the number one rivalry amongst locals in this town. Yeah. Didn't hurt that uh, Aaron Rodgers came here and took all the back pages for months. You know what's funny about that? <laughs> After the Giants won a playoff game and were, <laughs> had the coach of the year and Daniel Jones has a $40 million contract. You know what's happening right now? His, his anger is bubbling over in this calm, passive-aggressive tone. Do you hear this? I love Nate Hackett. <laughs> As he gets ready to call Jets Giants, did you hear that little diatribe? <laughs> that little took all the attention away after we won a playoff game. If Aaron Rodgers was here, and he's not, he's rehabbing. I did watch him on the Manning cast last night. That baseball game completely sucked, so I'll mm. probably take my loss on the ratings yeah, battle. Definitely. Of who will have a higher rating in New York, the ALCS or the football game. Football game was better. But as I watched Aaron Rodgers and I thought about the alternate universe of Aaron being the quarterback, in a weird way, I don't know what Aaron being healthy and let's say the Jets being 5-1 and one does to this rivalry. Because at that point, the arrogance would be warranted yeah. if Sean's right. At that point, even I would fit the arrogant card of, ah, we're a Super Bowl team, we're this or that. So in a weird way, the Jets being closer to the Giants' level by not having Aaron Rodgers may inflame the rivalry even more. Yeah, you're probably right. And Aaron Rodgers, if he ever, I don't know, next year, if he plays... Uh-huh. This thing yeah. in, in the preseason, even? Yeah, totally. But he's 40 off an Achilles. He's irrelevant. This <laughs> and here's the reality. If Aaron Rodgers was healthy, Giant fans like Sean and Lugie and everyone else would basically be saying, well, look, we, we don't have a shot. They're a lot I, better. I'd be more confident. We got nothing to lose. But now, the Giants playing for their season on Sunday. I mean, their season is on the line oh. Sunday at MetLife Stadium. That's mm-hmm. just the reality. So the, the Giants, it's not only shutting guys up, shutting the arrogant Jet fan up you don't like, you're also playing a football game that you need to win because if you lose, your season's over. If you win, you extend it another week. Are the Jets a playoff team if they have losses to the Giants and Pats on the resume? If the <laughs> Jets lose to the Giants, it is a destroying kind of loss. No question. Because, And I said this yesterday, and I'll say it again. The New York Jets can beat anybody. They can lose to anybody. 
And that's why if you're looking for me to be arrogant, if Sean's looking for me to be the Jet fan that you stereotype, the Jets are winning no problem. Twenty, I don't know where that came from. 25 <laughs> years old, arrogant, we can't lose to the Giants. You're barking up the wrong tree. I'm afraid of my own shadow. And most Jet fans are. Not just because of 55 years, 54 years, because I haven't even seen most of those years. The reason I'm afraid of my shadow is this past year. The reason I'm afraid of my shadow Mm -hmm. is the last decade. The reason I'm afraid of my shadow is I don't trust this team yet. Now, there may be a day, Tiki, where I do. Yeah. And they've got a long way to get there. Beating the Eagles was fantastic. Competing with the Chiefs was great. It was fantastic. Beating the Bills week one, amazing. But you got to beat the teams you're better than. And right now, uh uh-oh, Evan's a trash talker. The Jets are better than the Giants. So they should beat them. And they better beat them. And if they don't beat them, yeah. It would be impossible to sit here talking about them being a playoff team if they can't beat the crappy Giants. You're oh, right. See, that's the problem. Yeah, that's, prob- that's exactly what's what, the What's that's the problem? The crappy, the crappy Giants. Giants. No respect. And by the way, I'd be afraid of your shadow too. It's the shape of three legs. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of a third leg, the great, legendary Howard Stern. Oh, he responded to Addressed <laughs> my uh, story. And by the way, Lugie was crying this morning because I played him the clip, and we'll play a little bit later on, of Howard talking about what I said. He replayed the clip of you and I. Which gives us license to replay his clip. 100%. But Lugie was very prominent in the clip, and he got emotional that Mm. his voice was heard on the Howard Stern show. Wow. Yeah. 